So who is the smartest person of all time? Laszlo Well, it's not Laszlo Hollyfeld, but his character was based on an elusive genius who lived secretly in the medical school dorms for a number of years. This boy, Damon Wallace, can multiply two columns of 20-digit numbers in five minutes. And no, it's not the math magician from the 1991 film Little Man Tate. But again, that film was based on real people. Ooh, what about Australian thinker Christopher Harding, listed in Guinness Book for over 25 years under the category Highest IQ? Nope, it's not him either. What about American journalist Arnold Jacobs, who in 2004 finished reading the 32-volume Encyclopedia Britannica? Not. Edith Stern, who we will discuss shortly, read Britannica before she was five years old. What about Stephen Hawking? Hmm, he's smart. He's done some interesting work on black hole thermodynamics, but uh, he's not that smart. In the following video, to determine exactly who is the smartest person of all time, we're going to step through the group of 37 people shown here ever said to have had an IQ of 200 or above in an ascending order of intelligence. This year's listing comprises 15 child prodigies, 5 women, 1 murderer, and 1 double Nobel Prize winner. The inquisitive reader can follow the attached link to see from where the various IQs come from. For example, Terman IQ, Cox IQ, Buzan IQ, Ratio IQ, Megatest IQ, Guinness Book IQ, and so on. The first three on our list, Chris Langan, Marilyn Savant, and Rick Rosner, can all be classified as what we might call IQ showboaters, namely people who have spent their entire lives studying how to take and be good at IQ tests, and having gone on to figure out ways to convert various combined IQ test scores into fictitious 200 range IQs, and then go on television and brag to everyone that they are the smartest person in the world. Let's say my IQ represents the number of people who prefer Domino's, then an average fifth grader's IQ represents the number of people who prefer Subway. All three, Savant, Langan, and Rosner are all college dropouts who have never produced anything of intellectual note but are connected by the fact that in the 1980s and 90s they were part of legally blind American philosopher Ronald Hoffman's newly created high IQ mega society. They worked as volunteer editors for the society's monthly journal and have taken and retaken Hoffman's 48 question math and verbal IQ test and have convinced themselves that each of their IQs is above 200. The red X shown here is a quick mark indication that the person's IQ is below 200 in reality. To give an example of this, Rosner's self-estimated IQ of 250 was made when at age 26 he returned to high school and started taking classes. He states, I got good grades in most of my courses. Due to my advanced age relative to my classmates, I had a functional IQ of about 250. Next on our list is Marilyn Savant, who is most likely the biggest scam artist of the group. If you go online right now and Google smartest person ever or highest IQ, Savant's name will be the top result, listing her with an IQ of 228. Being that in 1983, through a bit of contriving, she got her name submitted into the Guinness Book of World Records under the title Highest IQ. The idea of getting Savant into Guinness was the brainchild of American lawyer Andrew Egendorf, who was looking for publicity for a book he was writing on high IQ societies and suggested the idea to Savant over dinner in 1983. Savant, in turn, looking to promote herself so to become a famous journalist, went with the idea and convinced Megatest creator Ronald Hoffman into sending her fictitious 228 IQ score into Guinness, which he did, figuring that her listing would help to promote his mega society. Here's the actual clipping that made Savant famous. It says that at age 10, she scored the ceiling for 23-year-olds, giving her an IQ of 228. When the matter was looked into, the actual school records indicated that she was not age 10, but age 11 years and 4 months, and that also the test she took was not designed for 23-year-olds, but rather 15-year-olds, whereby using the correct values, her IQ would have been 132 according to that test result. When questioned about this, she says the documents supporting her claims were provided by a teacher whose name she can't remember. American psychologist Alan Kaufman comments on this in his 2009 book, IQ Testing 101. The person who came up with an IQ of 228 for Savant committed an extrapolation of a misconception, thereby violating almost every rule imaginable concerning the meaning of IQs. In 1990, after Guinness learned that her 228 IQ was faked, they removed the category of highest IQ completely from Guinness Book. 
Whatever the case, here's a clip of Savant basking in her glory as the smartest person ever. Good evening, good evening, and welcome very, very much to Conversations, where I'm very pleased to welcome to the program Marilyn uh, Mock Vassavant. And uh, Marilyn is in a unique position in terms of world society in that she's been identified in the most recent edition of, uh, to be coming out of the uh, Guinness Book of Records, as the most intelligent person in the world, having had an IQ test uh, validating her intelligence that puts her in that position. And uh, Marilyn, welcome very, very much to Conversations. It's a great pleasure to meet you. Wow, thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> Next on our list is American cosmologist Chris Langan who by taking and retaking Ronald Hoffman's 1983 megatest has gone on to boast that he is the smartest person alive. Langan became famous when in 1999 Esquire magazine did a feature article on him titled The Smartest Man in America, claiming that he had an IQ of 195. For the last decade or so, he's been working on a paper called The Cognitive Theoretic Model of the Universe in attempts to prove intelligent design. Noting that Langan is an intelligent design advocate, we must point out that a key factor of true intelligence is the ability to think for oneself as compared to acceptance and memorization of what one has been told is true. I happen to see a copy of Omni magazine. It said the world's most difficult IQ test consists of 48 problems, some of which are extremely difficult. The verbal problems were all pretty easy, so I just squeezed through them. I happen to have a larger than average vocabulary. The really difficult ones were some of the spatial problems and the number sequences. Actually highly difficult. So uh, as it turned out, I ended up setting a record score on that test. Okay, so let's see what Langan's record scores actually were. The first time he took the test under pseudonym of Eric Hart, he scored 42. He then retook the test a second time, scoring 47, which would correlate to an IQ between 170 and 190. But let's see what he says in the video. My IQ would be somewhere between 190 and 210. One thing that Langan does get points for is being the cockiest. I am closer to absolute truth than any man has been before me. Next is American child prodigy Nathan Leopold, coming in at number 34, who spoke his first words at four months, reportedly had an IQ of 200 to 210, could read 15 languages and speak four, by age 19 had finished college and was in his first year of law school at the University of Chicago when, during that year, he came under the view that he was an example of one of, one of Nietzsche's Ubermen, and thus above the law. And to test this theory, he and another child prodigy named Richard Loeb kidnapped and later killed a 14-year-old Bobby Franks of a wealthy Chicago family and were thereafter caught and sentenced to life in prison. Next on our list is American music prodigy Marnin Leibel Kozer, said to have been tested with a childhood IQ of 268 on the Stanford Binet, who famously was described as the omnibus prodigy of all the child prodigies discussed in the 1986 book Nature's Gambit, Child Prodigies and Development of Human Potential. Causer was speaking grammatically correct sentences at three months, reading simple books by age one. By age three, he could read and write and speak in several languages and had studied mathematics and was composing music and playing the violin. By age seven, he was writing computer programs at MIT. His abilities, however, seem to have petered out into adulthood, and he is presently a decent computer programmer and plays classical music as a hobby. Coming in at number 32 on this year's listing is Singaporean chemistry prodigy Anand Kali, who presently is age 11 and is said, according to his father, to have an IQ of 349. Some of his abilities are quite fascinating. Kali, at age 1, for instance, was said to have given a detailed account of his own birth. While most children don't form memories before age 3, there have been a few instances of those who do begin forming memories at birth. It's fun, because I think I can even remember being born. For the first two weeks of my life, I didn't have a name. Kali supposedly said his first word at two weeks, was reading at eight months, was interested in hyperdimensional shapes by age three, and had taught himself chemistry off the internet by age six. Graduated high school at age seven, and at age eight, could recite pi to 518 digits and was studying physical sciences at Health University. Einan Celeste Cawley was about to embark on a world record-breaking memory challenge. Well, we've been in correspondence with Einan's father, who has sent rather a lot of emails um, detailing his son's many talents. So I'm looking forward to checking it out for myself. To put this next clip into context, according to his father, 
Kali has the record for being the youngest to speak, where specifically, at age two weeks, he said the word ai, which means water, mainly, whenever he was thirsty, and at five weeks, said the word poo, supposedly, whenever he needed it, his diaper changed. Not even the great William Sidus, the granddaddy of all prodigies, who comes in at number eight on this year's list, spoke that early. When did you realize that he had this gift? Well, the thing is, we, we got used to him being surprising um, from from when he was born, really. For instance, he, he spoke his first word when he was two weeks old. Right, uh, right. Yeah, two weeks old. What, what word was that? Aie. Aie is Malay for water. And he would say it whenever he was thirsty. He'd keep on saying it repeatedly until we gave him water. Because it's very hot here, isn't it? Mm. So he, he, he wanted water. we keep on he keep on repeating it until we gave him water, then he would stop saying it. And shortly afterwards, he started saying, Poo. Whenever he needed his nappy changing, mm. he'd say, Poo. So this is, a, this is a, a baby who's... How old was he when he said, Poo? Um, it's a few weeks later, but he started saying, Poo. He would say it in context. You knew from the context that it's actually the word, because he would keep on saying that sound, which <clears throat> matched a word, until you actually met that sound with the right response for that sound. And when you met that need, he stopped saying the word. Here's a picture of Anan at age six writing out some chemical equations, and the following clip is a video of Anan at age eight reciting pi to 518 digits. Ready, steady, go. Next on the list is the person with the true highest ever recorded IQ, American mathematics prodigy a Dragon de Mello, calculated according to his father to have had an IQ of 400 at age 5, who in 1987, at the age of 11, set the world record for being the youngest person to graduate from college, graduating with a BS in computational mathematics. Ironically, a year after he graduated, his parents got divorced, his mother took custody and put him back in junior high, even though he had already graduated from college, and he has since, as an adult, been working at menial jobs such as Home Depot and as a paint contract estimator. <laughs> 